This is a super engaging session. I am uh, Michael Batko, Southbed CEO, and the drinking tea is Sasha, um, our head of um, operations. He runs the, um, the cohort. Um, so this is a super interactive session. So I really want you to be engaging on um, the questions um, on the poll. So we've got a poll running right now. I'm really curious if you have dialed into our demo day or if you've attended the demo day in the past. And um, we're going to end the poll in a couple of minutes as well, just to see what the answers come in at. Um, and um, the other thing is that we don't have a slide also. Actually, you put in your questions, and then why we will do it is we actually want to answer every single question you have. Um, and Sasha will be interrupting me as I go and speak um, with any questions from you, if they're relevant, um, to, whilst I speak, or we'll cover them at the end as well. And we we'll probably won't take the full hour. Um, but it really just depends how many questions come in. Um, so awesome to have re everybody on here. We've got 67 people live now. Um, and before I actually get started, um, I also put in a little disclaimer at the very top, which is um, sign up for office hours. So I'll go into a bit more depth of what office hours actually are, um, but it's a completely complete no-brainer for every single founder out there. And um, you get a free 30-minute session with one of our mentors. Um, and we literally facilitate over a thousand conversations. Completely depends on your problem. So, I mean, everybody has a billion problems. Pick one of them, and we actually match you up with the best mentor who has experience um, in that space. And actually, it's their subject matter expertise, and we actually ma match you up based on expertise. And um, so, you can definitely jump on the website already and register. Um, and any questions about office hours, always happy to answer them as well, but we'll cover them a bit later today. The other thing I wanted to mention is um, our next cohort, because we have received quite a few questions already, is definitely going ahead. It's starting in July. It will be a virtual cohort, which is um, a bit of a change for us. The Sydney 20 cohort actually went through a halfway change um, where they went from in-person to virtual, but it's been a really interesting um, change, which went really, really well. So we're super excited to run the next cohort virtually. The beauty of that is you can literally uh, participate as a founder, as a startup, from anywhere around Australia, as well as second announcement, we're also be running, we will be running a New Zealand cohort. So we'll be running two parallel cohorts, um, one in Australia, one in New Zealand. Um, you don't need to relocate, it's all virtual. Um, and that's a huge change for Startman as well. So I can go into a bit more depth there as well, but that's super exciting as well as our last announcement already, <laughs> and I've got so many this morning, um, is um, our climate cohort. So we had our first climate cohort as part of the Sydney cohort, which you, some of you have dialed into our demo day already, and um, we will be running that again. So this is focused on um, companies which are focused on carbon deceleration. So just withdrawing carbon from the from the atmosphere in whichever shape or form that is. There's lots and lots of different ways to do that as well. I'll talk a little bit more about that afterwards. Actually, Sasha could cover that as well at the end, a little bit more about our climate change initiative. Um, all right, well, that's all the announcements. Before I go into a bit more of a presentation, um, let's have a look at the poll. Um, I'm just going to end the poll now. Um, we've got 30% of people, so we've got 82 people live right now have dialed into a virtual demo day last <laughs> week. That was really cool, really um, interesting experience for us as well. We've never done it before. Um, and 60% of you actually haven't attended the demo day yet, which is also exciting because there's so much more magic um, for you to join, which is awesome. I really hope you join our next one. Um, all right. So um, what I have for you is, is five big topics, um, and I'll be running through each one of them. Ask me questions as I go, or we can cover them at the end as well. Um, the five topics for me are I'm going to walk you through the StartMate history, just so you have a bit of an understanding where StartMate comes from. Um, we'll go into um, who our StartMate mentors are, because they're actually the core layer of our community. And um, I go a little bit more into our alumni as well, just so you know what kind of startups came out of Startmate. And then the last two sections are there, a bit more operational, tactical questions, which I know quite a few of you have questions about, which is our selection process, as well as our program. So that are like the five <laughs> core areas. Um, and I'll be taking questions as I go. So yeah, awesome. Love all the engagement on the chat already. Um, all right, so the first um, first one up is um, the Startmate history. So Startmate um, 
started in 2010, 2011, and um, the little known history there, I guess, is that it actually started before Blackbird. Um, so it predates Blackbird Ventures. Um, StartMate was founded um, by Nikki Shchivak, who uh, then later became also the uh, co-founder of Blackbird, as well as um, Mike and Scott, the Atl um, founders of Atlassian, um, and a core group of another 10 to 15 mentors back in the day. And they all came back from Silicon Valley in 2011 and just saw there was just no venture capital. And they really wanted to get that started in Australia because they really believed that Australian founders can build global companies as well. And they all decided to put in $10,000 themselves to invest into the founders of the next generation. And that's actually what um, StartMid was based on. It was very much a founders helping founders. So um, founders actually putting skin in the game themselves to invest into the future and the next generation. And actually we'll very much from in StartMed, we have just gotten a bit bigger than that, um, that back then. Back then we invested in five companies. Um, and now what we see actually is men well, mentors invest into startups, those startups grow and those founders then become alumni and then they become mentors. And it's just this incredible cycle of life at StartMate now where lots and lots of our founders return as mentors. And um, usually they hit me up even two, three months after the program being like, I want to be a mentor. Usually I tell them, let's give it another six to 12 months, raise your next round after that. And, um, but it's always, Super exciting for me to actually see alumni wanting to invest back into StartMate um, and actually become a mentor after that as well. Um, so that's kind of the, the history there. Um, StartMate then has expanded from originally Sydney to Melbourne and our next <laughs> expansion is now New Zealand in July, which is super exciting. Um, we now invest into 10 to 15 companies every cohort and we run those cohorts every six months. So January in Sydney and July in Melbourne, as well as the Auckland slash New Zealand cohort now also in July. So that's kind of the history there. Um, and again, like it all relies on our mentors, on those founders actually wanting to help founders. And the key difference of StartMate is actually that every single one of our mentors doesn't just fly in, fly out and gives you a little bit of advice and just doesn't care about you. They literally have $10,000 at least all the way up to $250,000 of their personal money invested into every single company in that cohort. So they're investing in every single company in that cohort. They, your success is their success. <clears throat> right. So that's kind of the start of my history. Um, I can see some A of the quick questions. one from me, Michael, yeah. just on that point. Uh, is that unique in the accelerator model? Yeah, so um, with accelerators, I've got a really strong perspective there, which is um, I actually have got a really strong perspective on that in general in life where everything is aligned on incentives. So it always just depends on your incentive structure, how something works. Accelerators in the world, um, there usually are four different business models of accelerators. Um, they're either government funded, which means that um, your revenue actually stream is um, well, is not as sustainable because you just don't know if you're going to get the grant funding two or three um, years down the line. The second model is the university model where you actually are predominantly helping your alumni or people associated with your university, which all of those models have pros and cons, by the way, um, which is awesome. Um, the third one is the corporate model where it's a corporate funded one where, again, like the incentives are not always 100% aligned with corporates and startups. The fourth model is um, a venture capital backed one. So Y Combinator is a really good example of that, where actually VC funds um, invest into the accelerator. And StartMate is actually quite a unique model in the world where I've never seen it anywhere else, where every single mentor is actually an angel investor of sorts, and they are actually invested into every single cohort and company. So it's quite, quite different that way. Yeah, but you knew I had a really strong perspective there. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Um, cool. And I know there's a couple of questions. Um, you, Sasha, just ask me anyone. Otherwise, we can cover them at the end as well. Yeah, I think a couple will cover at the end. So. Awesome. Um, all right. So the second part, which I promised you out of those five parts, is our mentors. And that's the people who are super proud of because they form kind of the, um, the base of our community. And um, 
it's been absolutely incredible um, to see that evolve over time. It's usually mentors referring each other and wanting to bring them into that community. Um, some of the mentors who joined us in the last cohort, especially part of the climate cohort, um, have, have been um, super exciting, super engaged. Um, a huge shout out actually for, um, to, for example, Culture Amp. We've got every single co-founder of Culture Amp now actually is a mentor, personally invested in Startmate literally helping some of the teams out on a weekly basis, which is absolutely incredible. And um, we have Cameron Adams who joined us part of the last climate cohort as well. We had Cliff Oberecht from Canva as well. They literally engage with the teams on like a weekly basis, um, which has been absolutely incredible. Safety culture, um, Luke Anir, who you adjusted a session with, um, same thing, does um, lunch lunches with our cohorts. Um, absolutely amazing. So those are like the, the startups which are, Billion dollar startups, they're like a hundred steps ahead of our companies, but super inspirational. And the other types of mentors are actually um, people who I'm probably even more proud of, which I mentioned at the beginning, which are our alumni. It's, um, it's the companies who go through Startmate, take two, three years to raise the Series A, Series B, and then they actually want to come back as mentors. And that's actually the best type of mentor you can have as a founder that are two or three steps ahead of you and give, can give you the most actionable insights and help. And that's always incredible to see to the circle of life at Startmate. The, that's kind of the founders, what I mentioned at the beginning, founders helping founders. We've actually expanded Startmate mentors um, across two other layers. The first one is um, we also recognize that sometimes it is really valuable to bring in um, subject matter experts, so especially early employees in companies. So a great example, actually, just because we're in this Giants conference right now, is um, Catherine Apti from, um, from Zero. In this cohort now, she used to be um, the head of marketing at Zero and um, Medium, a couple of other huge, huge startups. But her perspectives actually on marketing are spot on. She's not a founder herself, but an incredible operator. And we've, we're bringing those people as well who actually have really deep expertise in one area, and um, but also that empathy for founders and for startups. And that's really, really important to us. The third type of uh, mentor is, um, is actually VCs and investors. We also recognize that lots of our companies do come out of Startmate wanting to raise one, two, three, four million dollars off the back of Startmate. Um, and exposing them to investors during the cohort is actually really beneficial. So as part of Startmate now, we have um, pretty much all of the big VC funds, most of the angel investors, um, big angel investors in Australia involved, as well as invested. So um, venture funds such as Airtree, Blackbird, Rampersand, Tempest Partners, SquarePeg, um, every single one of them actually invests into Startmate, they invest they're actually invested into every single company across the cohort. They see you progress over the 12 week um, program and they're just way more likely to then lead around after that as well, which is then super exciting for us. Because thinking about the kind of different cohorts and dominating, for example, of um, the, the 13 companies, half of them raised around and every single round was led by a different venture capital firm in Australia, which was really cool. Um, yeah, wow. So that's kind of on the mentor side. There's kind of three types of mentors, I'd say. The founders, the early stage um, startup employees and um, investors. Uh, before we jump on to the next section, we've got a couple of questions which I think kind of fit here, Michael. Um, one is from Rob who asks, if every mentor invests at least 10K in 10 to 15 companies, how does the math add up? You know, are they investing directly into each of those companies or how do the mentors actually invest? Yeah, great question. So um, we raise a fund as part of Startbank and every mentor invests into that fund and that fund we invest into all of the companies. So your $10,000 is actually equally invested into all of them. Um, and then with the current cohort and speaking about having some investors as the mentors, uh, the current cohort, did we see COVID have an impact on their willingness to support startups post the end of the program? I mean, the program just finished, but... Um, our mentors support to the to the startups? No, absolutely not. Like it's been, um, pre, it's been super interesting. Of um, actually, when I get asked about COVID and the impact it had on the startup alumni, 
um, for everybody who tuned in at the demo day, you, you saw some of those perspectives already. Some of the companies, um, obviously, they're not doing that well, um, but they recognized it. So a great example was actually expense made um, at demo day who are in the travel industry, in the expense industry where travel is completely shut down. So it's just like, well, okay, you don't have a business, like literally nobody's traveling. But um, Kemlin, the founder of um, Expense Made, literally just said, um, that's fine. I'm going into hibernation. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk, keep talking to customers, but preserve as much cash as I can. And then literally hit the ground running as soon as travel is back up again. On the other side, we've got startups who are doing incredibly well because everybody's working from home and they're actually in that space. So just, sorry, to go back into the question of like, have mentors actually engaged more or less? It's been amazing to rally, uh, to see those mentors and the angel investors rally behind those startups, um, even despite COVID and despite, um, yeah, just, I mean, what everybody calls uncertain times. Amazing. And for some of the people in the audience asking questions about uh, whether your specific startup idea fits and the selection process, Mark was going to touch at a high level a bit later on about what we look for in founders and how we actually make our selection decisions. So we will get to your questions. I think it'll just be good to give the overarching context first and then we can um, have follow-up questions there. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, we're definitely gonna come to that as well. And if I forget about it, definitely remind me at the end as well. I'll, I'll be here to remind you. <laughs> cool. Right, so that's, um, we covered the history of Startmate and the mentors. Um, the next part I want to cover is some of our alumni, just to give you an idea of um, who they are, as well as a couple of stories I wanted to share of alumni at different stages. And um, I guess for the uh, high level context, as part of StartMid, we've now invested, um, I mean, we're in cohort, we just finished cohort 13, and um, we invested in over 110 companies. We usually invest at a million dollar valuation, and um, I'll go into that in a bit, a bit more detail. So in theory, we've invested in 110 companies and a million dollar valuation and all of those companies cumulatively um, are now worth over $1 billion, which is pretty amazing. Um, a couple of examples of the bigger ones at StartMeds are um, Buckrod. Um, Casey Ellis went through StartMed in 2012. Um, he, it is a marketplace for hackers mm -hmm. where um, basically a, um, a website needs to check the security and then can release hundreds of hackers onto the website to see any um, security faults. So it's kind of like a bug hunt. Um, bounty. And he went for start, but didn't have anything, um, closed 100K in AR with roof reforms and no product at all. And now the company is in San Francisco, actually transitioning kind of between Australia and San Francisco with 150 plus um, employees. Um, more than a hundred million dollar valuation. On the other side, we've got um, Flirty, another one of our startups, which is um, doing really, re really well, which does commercial drone delivery. Um, Propeller, who um, lots of you might actually know, um, who has over a hundred employees across um, um, Sydney and Denver doing um, waste tracking in mines. Um, absolutely incredible company. Happy Co, and 100 people plus and actually now some space. Um, lots of you might know Adrolo, which is an education startup uh, predominantly in Victoria, but also New South Wales um, provi providing high school education. Um, actually, quite a few of those were software focused. Um, so an example of hardware as well for us is Morse Micro, which is completely reinventing the way Wi-Fi works. And they just raised um, a $35 billion dollar round. So I could actually keep going, but uh, those are some of our um, bigger startups. Um, which are doing really, really well. But um, for that question as well, just like what different stages do startups have when they join StartMate? Um, it's actually, um, and this is probably a little known fact where we invest super early on, where some founders often ask me of, um, ju just ask me, um, am I too early? Like I've got an idea, I've got an MVP. And just to give you two stories here, um, we had in our last cohort, um, Alice from Avira joined. Um, she came pretty much straight out of uni. She had an idea to solve um, period pain through a, tens through a little tense machine, which you put on yourself. And um, it sends electric signals through your body to actually help you alleviate period pain. Um, she didn't have a product, had an idea, had a pitch deck, um, 
had an absolutely incredible energy, just super clear vision. We got her as part of StartMate. Um, and within three months, she completely transformed as a person, as a, as a founder, um, got the first 88 units in front of um, customers, got an absolutely incredible um, NPS score and feedback. And off the back of StartMate raised one and a half million dollars from Blackbird. So that's on the super early stage. As a super early side. On the other side, actually, the other story is um, the, uh, the uh, Muso team, which is a marketplace for musicians. And um, they came in again with like an MVP. They were all three of them were not coders, not programmers, um, but absolutely um, high energy, enthusiastic founders. And um, as part of Startmate, they launched within six weeks, they launched their product, and then they were growing every single week 50%. And off the back of StartMate again, they raised their one or one and a half million dollar round um, of, from the Alberts family and a couple of angel investors as part of StartMate as well, which is like super early. You build your product and I actually you launch it off the back of StartMate. And um, just to give you a couple of stories, just to finish the alumni off um, on the late stage, which is, I guess, the surprising thing uh, part as well. I often get asked or just like, am I too late? Or actually, I don't get asked. Often companies tell me, I'm way too late. I've already got so much revenue and like I'm way past start, mate. So just to give you an example here, Work180 um, was a startup in our Sydney 18 cohort, a, um, a job platform for women specifically. And they use, um, they've got a really, really interesting model there, how they screen the employers. They don't screen the, um, the applicants and they only put in awesome employers on their platform. So they flipped that, uh, that model around. They went through StartMate when they already had $1 million in annual recurring revenue. They bootstrapped their business for three years and only then they joined StartMate. Um, and Gemma, um, we've got a blog post on our website as well where you can read all, um, up on all of that. So that was an absolutely incredible experience. She raised her um, one or $2 million round off the back of um, StartMate as well from lots of our mentors, which is like she wanted to use it as a um, form to actually fundraise, which is perfect. Um, the other one, which I want to share, just to finish that off, is um, if you tuned into our virtual demo day um, last week, was 5B, our, um, one of our climate change startups, which does um, within the solar space. Um, they joined, they already have 30 FTE. Um, they are, have projects um, literally across of the whole of Australia. Um, and they raised a Series A of a couple of million dollars during StartMate, right? So this is like way past the kind of MVP stage. But the reason why I'm giving you those stories is there's a really wide range of startups going through StartMate and it just really depends on you what you want to get out of it. And there's just so much you can get out of it. So do you think the, there is... Those um, mentors. Do you think there's an ideal stage at which you know you're ready for start, mate, Michael? Or how should everyone in the audience be thinking about whether it's time to apply or not? Yeah, um, the, the stages, the way I always think about it is um, if you, wherever you are right now and wherever you will be in six months' time, you're going to have to course correct. And what start, mate, helps you, what our network helps you is course correct faster and better. So you're just going to end up on this way faster growth trajectory. So what's the perfect stage? Um, there is no perfect stage. I genuinely think every startup should be going through some form of, um, of well, start made or accelerator and just get all the help from awesome mentors because it's just those people have been in your shoes before. They have the empathy for you and they can actually help you along that way. Um, Amazing. Um, Cool. And do we have any other questions on alumni or mentors? Um, uh, no immediate ones on alumni or mentors, but lots on selection and what types of businesses we look for and things like that. So that I think leads perfectly into your next section. Amazing. Um, great. So we covered history, <laughs> mentors and alumni. The last part, two parts I want to cover is the selection process as well as the program itself. So on the selection side, um, we have um, one kind of almost like a pre-stage and then we've got three official stages to our selection side. The first stage, um, which isn't actually part of selection, but which I encourage every single one of you to go through is office hours. So you've got the link at the top of this chat already. Um, office hours is just this 
um, huge initiative which we do every six months and um, where we literally get 100 to 150 mentors give us hundreds of hours of the time of a two-week period and any founder in australia or new zealand can apply and um, unfortunately we don't have enough slot to facilitate every single founder because we do get i think in the last office hours we had 422 applications to be part of office hours this time around um, it's looking like 600 to 800 um, founders across Australia and New Zealand, which is going to be pretty amazing. Um, and what happens there is you have a problem, you tell us whatever your problem is, and we match you up with the best mentor we have. And um, we give you a 30 minute slot with them. You can ask them whatever you want to in those 30 minutes and get help on that problem. Um, mentors absolutely love it because they just get to meet 10 founders back to back in their area and um, which is super high energy founders for you it's like you can basically ask whatever problems you have to somebody who's actually been in your shoes before um, so 100 percent apply um, so that's kind of the first step and that's free it's easy it's online um, you can do it anytime the yeah, selection process itself is in three stages so um general website you can already um, express your interest we'll be sending out our questions um, in a week or two but the first step is online a just 15 questions on your startup or roughly 15 questions and um, where we pre predominantly focus on you as a founder why are you solving the problem what is the problem it's dozens of times during the time of your startup um, what your revenue model is and um, also upload a three minute video about yourself and so there's like 15 questions they're all pretty standard and um, the most important ones for us because I often get asked is um, what is the problem you're solving is it really a huge hair on fire problem and how do you know that and also why are you working on the problem so as part of that selection process we um, um, I just forgot, we had 380 applications, I think, for the Sydney cohort. Um, 100 of those were actually from climate change focused startups. And what actually happens at this stage is because every single one of our mentors is actually invested in Startmate, they also get to decide who will be part of Startmate. So it's actually not Sasha or myself doing the selection, it's actually every single one of our mentors um, gets 10 upvotes and they actually select who will be part of it. So then mentors jump in. They comment on each um, application, well, they comment on applications they like, they dislike, they start arguing, it's super interesting. Um, and um, we then select the top 30 companies to invite them into the next stage. The next stage is our interview day. So in the past that was in person where we get 30 companies as well as 30 mentors in the room. And what you do for two hours is you meet 15 people, 10 minutes back to back, which is like super intense, two and a half hours. Um, super fun because you get to pitch your startup um, to our mentors and your pitch actually changes every every um, every conversation as well. So you actually refine it and get better at it as well, which is super fun. Um, and off the back of interview day, we then invite the best 15 companies into our last stage, which is our deep dive um, interview, which is a 45 minute conversation, again, just virtually, um, where we just dive a little bit deeper into um, into your startup. So that again, there's like no surprises in there. We just want to understand your business a bit better. Um, we just try to cover everything off that we can't cover off in a 10 minute conversation because 10, minute, 10 minutes is quite restrictive. What do we look for? Because I know that was a big question. Um, so just in terms of what do we really look for is it's pretty simple. We look for the most ambitious founders working on their life's mission. That's, that's really what it comes back to. We are completely industry agnostic. We invest in style, software, hardware, aerospace, um, climate change, like every single every blockchain, like there's just everything in there. We actually don't really care much about the industry itself. We literally care about you as a founder and why are you solving that problem? Why is that? Why will you never stop working on that problem basically? So we, we, we are looking for the people who are the misunderstood, the big dreamers um, who work on that huge lives, um, who, on their own life's mission. So um, that being said, I know there's often questions of like, oh, is it in my space and stuff? 
so again here we're completely industry agnostic we had anything from retail to beauty to music um to wi-fi chips to literally people putting rockets onto balloons and shooting them into space so like <laughs> it's pretty varied out here <laughs> at Startmate. what about um things like social enterprise michael do we have any history of accepting social enterprise startups yeah great question so we and um, there is actually a precedent where in every cohort we roughly have one company who we also accept as a social enterprise so you can definitely apply that as well and um, it again here just depends um for us on like we always invest in the founder itself not in the business like it's actually the person is the most important part of them and any particularly notable alumni stories that fall in that category for you um yeah so i mean the one <laughs> which comes to mind straight away is actually um jane from bring me home so Bring Me Home is a food um, in the food space where every any restaurant which has leftovers can put the food onto um, Bring Me Home, and they um, and people can just yeah, get food which would go to waste otherwise for massively reduced prices. So they are predominantly Melbourne, but they expanded to Sydney now as well. So you can actually get cheaper food, which would usually go to waste um, for a much lower price to so jump on there as well the other one is um, nightingale and um, a housing startup which is also absolutely incredible amazing um and we've got a few people asking whether we accept single founders or only accept founding teams um oh yeah i love that um yeah so we um <laughs> we don't have any rules there like yes sure it's harder as a single founder but we don't um we don't um we don't care like one founders four founders um, four founders is, I think, the largest we've had. Um, but in terms of single founders, I'm just thinking about the la this cohort which just finished. I mean, Camlin from Expansemate was a single founder. Um, bum, bum, bum. Um, yeah, so it's just like in every cohort, I think we roughly have, um, I'd say, a third of the cohort is probably mm -hmm. single founder uh, single founders, which is perfectly fine. And then, kind of sticking on the what we look for track for a little while, a few people are also asking like what what size of problem do they need to be addressing does every startup need to have the potential to become a unicorn uh how how big does their vision and market need to be for us to think about accepting them yeah so yeah great question so um a huge huge problem that problem ideally is in a market which is absolutely massive what often happens is you start out in a smaller market which then has which then grows out, which is perfectly fine. Like start out in a niche, but that problem has to be a hair on fire problem. So it's like okay. people <laughs> like could not live without your solution. Um, and then how about if you are a single founder, but you're looking for co-founders, someone's just asked this question, uh, asking any advice for finding a, a co-founder or how to go about that process? Um, yeah, so that's a good one. Like we get asked that quite a lot. And there's a couple of different ways. So, I mean, a great program which launched, um, what's like six to 12 months ago is Antler. Um, Antler, really good structured programming around actually finding a co-founder. So if you're looking for that structured part, the other thing I always recommend is always meetups and, um, and connecting with um, people with similar um, interests to yourself. Um, and actually the other one is, I think I read that um, recently on the YC website as well, which is often you actually um, know your co-founder already, but you just might not be aware of it. So it's somebody in your past from your high school, from your university, and actually just like even starting those conversations up again. Okay. Um, and just a few more questions on the kind of selection of what we look for track. Uh, we've got a question in the chat asking basically, is there interest in Australia regarding social type platforms where the main priority is to grow users before revenue over the first two years and then kind of build revenue off the platform later once you have network effects? Um, I think there's some people who say that really that model only works in Silicon Valley. Uh, is that something we would shy away from? Oh, I would definitely not be something we would shy away from. Um, I'm just thinking of an example. Um, um, actually, a good example is probably um, Jigspace on our Melbourne 18 cohort. They actually consciously decided to not monetize um, early on. What they <laughs> do is a an AR 
system to anybody can create an um, augmented reality, virtual reality model on the platform um, and just publish it. So for example, schools can now create like planets and just like have the, have the kids download the app and show them planets in kind of like real life. But I consciously decided to actually not charge customers for it because they wanted to explode in, in, in terms of user numbers first. Um, so no, we absolutely don't shy away from that. There definitely is appetite there as well. Um, yes, it's harder because you need to raise more money. Um, but no, that's that's totally something we look into. Um, we look for okay. as well. And then another question, which I've seen a few people ask, is: Do we need founders to be full time on their business? Uh, I think there are a few founders in the audience who have a side hustle. Hmm. Um, so, what's our view there? Yeah, so we do have a strong yeah. view there, which is um, a, at least one of the founders has to be full time on the business when they get into startmate. So that is an absolute requirement um, because, as I mentioned at the beginning, we look for founders who are working on their life's mission. If something is your life's mission, you're going to give it your everything to actually go full time onto that and just do that. Um, so, yeah, um, as part of Startmate, $75,000, which we invest in you, is not a lot of money, but it gives you enough money to actually go full time on your business, which is, which is the rationale here as well. Okay, amazing. Um, there are a couple more questions before we go into what the structure of the program is that oh, wow. link to alumni so and our selection. Um, so there was one question from Emma in the chat asking for examples of the most notable female-led startups we've seen come through the program. So you've oh, yeah. obviously supported quite a few cohorts now. Um, mm. What what resonates for you? Oh, I love that question because there's so many. Oh, um, so good. I mean, if you virtual um, demo day last week and um, one um, absolutely incredible founder is Phoebe from Beyond Ag. They convert um, fly, well, they breed lots of flies and convert those larvae into, um, into pet food as well as fertilizer and they feed those larvae um, landfill. So they literally get paid three times. They get for, paid for accepting landfill. They sell off protein, get paid for that as well, and they sell off the fertilizer and get paid again. Absolutely incredible founder. She's um, co-founded it with Alex, and um, they're awesome. Um, in the last quarter as well, we've got Steph as part of a ruler. So they do a 3D um, breast prosthesis um, startup for women who had mastectomies. Um, absolutely amazing mission and vision. I'm super curious how she's gonna go there, um, but it's that's awesome. Um, the one who I mentioned already is Work180, Gemma, um, as well as Valeria, the two co-founders of Work180, literally provide a job platform for women, um, which just flipped the entire job search model on its head because they screen the employers. And employers, only if employers are good enough in terms of maternity leave, in terms of all of those different initiatives, they actually get put onto the platform, which is absolutely amazing. They've expanded to the UK and to the US now. Um, awesome, awesome business. Um, we've got Heidi and Lucy from MentorLoop um, providing mentoring for corporates. Um, we've got Gabby Howard from Flaunter. I mean, there's literally like, I could yeah. keep going. It's, uh, we've got some incredibly women-led businesses there. Amazing, yeah. I think even, did you mention Lane from Chatterize in the last cohort mm -hmm. as well, who's incredible drive, um, kind of came in with no product and walked out of Startmate with, I think, over 16,000 users and a product. Yeah, um, absolutely so incredible. Ridiculous yeah. stories. <laughs> um, a couple more questions on selection. So are you happy to keep fielding some of these before we move on to the next section, Michael? Oh, sorry. I think I might have broken up. Can you just yeah, ask it again? cut out briefly. Uh, so we've got a couple more questions on selection. So are you happy to keep uh, fielding those before we move on to the program structure? I'm just thinking we've got 20 minutes left. Let's do maybe one more. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Um, I think there was a question about the specifics of the process and what our mentors who are making the, the decisions will look for. Is there in the interview process particular metrics or sig signs of progress that they are looking for in the selection process or does that vary? Um, yeah, no, great question. And um, this, like, we ask, we say the, the, the most important three or like that's where I always look for first is one the problem itself like how big is it and how do you know and um, that's always the first question I start with 
The second one is the founder, like what is your connection to the problem? Like what, why do you actually care? Is it because you had it yourself in the past? Is it um, like, what is your reason? And the third one I then look for is traction. And traction kind of goes back to what I said at the beginning, like how do you know something is a big problem? And traction can come in lots and lots of different shapes and forms and um, people signing up, people giving you money and um, prepayments, et cetera. But like, um, how have you, what have you actually done about it? Like so many people want to start companies and have ideas, but where they like the first step, which they always fail on is just getting started and getting in front of people. We want to see people who've actually gotten in front of people and just can prove that there is that demand there. So in terms of what do we look for, that's, that's kind of like the first three things. Amazing. Awesome. Uh, well, in the interest of time, we'll keep moving along. Uh, why don't we jump into what the program structure looks like? I'm loving all the questions, so that's awesome. I wish we had more time, <laughs> um, but we can cover some of them at the end as well. So the program itself um, is a 12-week, and I'm going to call it an unstructured program because StartMed is fairly unstructured in a way, in intentionally so as well. Um, I'll walk you through the structure itself, um, which we do have, which is at the very beginning, we have a week zero, and then we have a program, and then at the very end, we've got our demo day as well as a San Francisco trip. Um, and that's actually the high-level structure of it all. It's a 12-week program where week zero is actually really important to us, where we, um, in the last couple of cohorts, we actually have all of the founders come with us into the middle of nowhere, into some national park, ideally with no Wi-Fi for free, to, for free days. And it's for us to actually completely disconnect. Um, but also to get to know each other because that cohort effect is so important. Founders actually supporting each other because they can learn so much from each other. And then also just resetting the expectations and setting themselves goals. So we expose them to some of our mentors and alumni who shared stories around how fast do you need to grow in order to become a hundred million dollar revenue startup and what are those goals you should be setting along the way. And week zero is really formative in that sense and really, really important. It sets kind of the tone for the rest of the program. The program itself, I'll go through in, this, in a second. Um, and then at the end, what we have is our demo days, which happened last week, which usually are in person where we've got them in Sydney and in Melbourne. And we've got roughly 500 to 600 people at each one of them. This time around, we had it virtually, which was almost 2,000 people tuned in. And um, we had over 100 people request one-on-one -on -one connections. 60 of them were from for directly for people wanting to invest. And I just want to say that it's on top of all of the investor interest, which we've got during start night. So that's been super interesting to see as well. And then what we do is we take all of the companies with us to San Francisco for a week, um, which obviously this time around, we actually did a virtual San Francisco trip, which is actually this Giants conference right now. And last week as well, we actually lined up another 10 speakers where we had um, San Francisco speakers and investors talk to our founders. Um, so that's kind of like the high level structure of StartMate. Um, in terms of the program structure, and when I say it's quite unstructured, it's so by design. We don't want you to spend um, hours and hours in front of a classroom and just listening into speakers who talk about um, marketing when you're actually a hardware startup and you don't need to do any marketing right now. I don't want anybody to attend any sessions which are not relevant to them. And we do put it, things around our startups, which are every single one of them is actually optional. So the first thing we actually do is partner you up with a startmate partner. So you actually have one mentor who you catch up every single week um, where you, you catch up with them every single week for 30 minutes, 30 minutes to an hour, and they hold you accountable to your goals, but also are your point of reference if you need any help. The second thing we do is actually we put a squad structure around you, which means we've got five to six mentors who are subject matter experts. They actually want to work with you. You want to work with them and they help you every single week with your challenges. And those are almost like if you see them as circles, you've got the partners in the middle who actually will catch up with you every single week. You've got the squads who are a bit more ad hoc. So you pull them in wherever you want to. And then you've got this super wide start made network where you can plug into anybody at any time. And we also organize mentor roulettes where you get to know lots of those mentors. And when I say unstructured is we literally organize our sessions during Startmate um, a week or two in advance. And that is again by design because every cohort is so different. They're all in so many different industries. There are different stages. 
So what we do every Monday is ask our founders, hey, what do you need help with? And they tell us and either we connect them one-on-one -on -one with the right person or if there's three or four founders who tell us the same thing, we actually organize the best speaker to come in and talk to those founders for an hour. And we organize content sessions, which are all um, optional um, to everybody. And everybody's invited, but you don't have to come. The only other, um, the only structured part of the program itself is actually the all hands, which is with Sasha, um, where you have your goals on the, on literally on a wall and you have your start make goals and you check in in front of your entire cohort of how are you going against those goals you support each other um, and also you hold each other accountable um, so that's that's a really good exercise yeah right that was a lot of me <laughs> talking and um, but yeah so this is roughly the, uh, the, the cohort so it's week zero program San Francisco trip and demo day and the program itself is really a weekly um, all hands on Mondays and then we put around structures around you to support you whichever way you want. But start by the, we don't spoon feed anybody. We give you the resources to plug into. It's almost like a buffet where you can choose whichever, whichever, whatever you want to. Yeah, amazing. And I think just um, kind of reiterating your points on that it really is flexible to how you want to utilize those resources. Um, just a couple of examples from how the most recent cohort used their squad, for example. Some of them were emailing each week, but only meeting once a month. And then we had some of the squads and the teams who felt the need to actually meet in person every week. And mm -hmm. we're getting, I think one of the squads had two of the Culture Ant founders on it, uh, Rod and Doug, the CTO and the CPO. And one of them was really helping kind of hammer them on their product vision and the direction and steering them on their kind of strategic direction from that point. And then they were getting really technical help on some of the tech challenges they were facing from Rod, the CTO, and the, the types of help and the frequency was just very different depending on each of the individual founders. And that was really interesting to see. So it really is like kind of customizable to your needs and where you're at. Um, yep. So we've got a couple of questions. My great example. Um, yeah. So there are a lot of questions in the chat about how some of these structures will work in the context of COVID, assuming that we're still kind of under lockdown uh, during the next cohort. So how how do you think about that? Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So from a programming perspective, so I guess there's two aspects of it, like um, <coughs> selection program, but also the underlying segment, which is community. And I just want to say like the underlying segment of community is actually the most exciting part, which is it doesn't really matter if it's in person or in virtually. Virtually, what it what happens is actually what opens up so many new doors. I mean, this Giants conference is a perfect example. You can bring in the best speakers globally and get access to them because 30 minutes with you in Australia and with somebody in San Francisco and Europe, it actually doesn't make a difference anymore. So the community aspect of it is stronger than ever. Um, because you can just plug in with anybody. So when, this time around, it's going to be super exciting because often we have only one to be part of the Sydney cohort, whereas this cohort now will be a virtual cohort. So it's just like mentors from Sydney, from Melbourne, from and from New Zealand want to get involved everywhere. So that's really exciting. On the selection and programming side, um, Again, like most of the selection process was already done online. So there's actually not much of a change there. And um, we already did the questions online. We already did the um, last interview online. The difference here is going to be the, uh, the interview day where you've got those 10 minute rotating sessions. And um, so we've got a couple of different platforms which we can use there, which run really smoothly. And um, so I'm actually not too concerned. Um, on the programming side um, here, um, it's actually really cool. It's been really interesting for us to experiment with lots of different platforms as part of the Sydney 20 cohort. So I'm super confident we can actually um, recreate that as well. And again, just like we um, mentioning again, what I said at the beginning, the exciting part of that is now, you now have access to mentors, which are not just location specific. You have access to mentors, which are like wherever they are as part of the Startmate community. Yeah. So that would be my answer there of like how does COVID okay. affect it? Um, great. Well, we've got lots more questions to go through. So was there anything else you wanted to add on the program before we jumped into some of those? We've got about 10 minutes left, a bit less than 10 minutes. Yeah, no. So there was actually the five areas. 
um, so you kind of see that action of the oh. um, um, And now any question goes, so ask me anything. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, so we got a question that's just come through asking if the company is headquartered in Australia, but the founder is based overseas, still full time on the business. Is that a business that we would consider, particularly now that we're virtual? That's a great question. Um, <laughs> um, I actually haven't thought about it. So it's a cool problem to solve life right now. Um, but ultimately, what we care about is an Australian connection. So I actually wouldn't um, I wouldn't mind if the founder isn't isn't actually in Sydney or Melbourne. Yeah. So that's actually not a problem for us. We do always require an Australian or New Zealand connection um, of the business or the founder. Yeah. Um, and a similar question has just come through asking if one of the co-founders uh, is not from Australia, is that acceptable? Totally. Um, yeah. yeah, totally. And I think even just the most recent cohort serves as a good example of that um, 5B both of the founders were originally based in Australia, um, but one of them for the last couple of years has actually been based in Berlin. So now one of them is based in Sydney, one's based in Berlin, and we accepted them both into the program and they both kind of engaged and got value out of it. So yeah. um, certainly open to flexibility and arrangements like that. Um, another question from Rob is, can people outside of the Startmate system invest? Um, there is um, an easy way, which is um, jump on our website and under mentors, you can actually register your interest to become a mentor. So usually what we do is um, you have to become a mentor to be able to invest into start into Startmate. There is, um, we, we have a new structure in place as well is um, because we keep the mentor um, community actually really um, strict and um, we always collect so much feedback on mentors before we let them into the community. So um, well, another way is actually we can connect you with Kylie Fraser from Eleanor Ventures. And actually she um, has a syndicate as well where you can invest indirectly into Startmate. Awesome. Um, we'll keep moving along because we've got a lot of questions to get through. There was one here from Daniel asking, with everything that is going on, how is Startmate viewing, say, standard problems, so marketing tech, for example, and does that affect how interested Startmate is in some of those companies for the accelerator? So I think it's in the context of COVID and climate uh, cohort and all of those things. Like, how has that had any impact on what we look for? Mm. Um, no, no impact at all. Like we invest in two companies for the lifetime. So we literally invest in like 10, 15, 20 year horizons. Um, so I actually don't really, it doesn't matter to us at all what's happening right now, what's happening in the next six to two months, uh, six months to two years. And um, we look for the most amazing people solving incredibly hard problems. And honestly, sometimes the most boring spaces are the best spaces. I mean, the way Rory um, describes propeller which is now a hundred people startup is they tell people how their, um, how their crap moves around my mind. <laughs> so it's just like, well, he would probably use better words than me, but like, it's basically, I'm just like, it's just waste management and um, <laughs> tracking and analytics, right? So it's not the most sexy problem of them all, but like an incredible problem to solve and some, um, and companies really, really need it to be solved. Amazing. Um, Lots more questions flooding in, so we'll keep <laughs> moving along. Uh, can Australians in another country apply and make it an Australian company? For example, if they are physically in the US, uh, which would be their market, but they want it to be an Australian company. Yeah, I think that question is just, is some form of Australian connection all that's required as long as there is an Australian connection, can they be based anywhere? Um, and I mm. think for us, that's probably a yes. Is that right? You can yeah, totally. be based anywhere. Yeah. Um, another question, I think from someone I actually know, Luke, potentially. Are you comfortable slash flexible with startups pivoting during the program if they find a viable opportunity? I think there's actually some cool examples of this in the past. Is that right, Michael? Um, yeah, totally. So um, in pretty much in every cohort, we've got companies pivoting and that's not a problem at all. Like every startup will actually pivot over the course of the lifetime. And it's just a matter of um, getting the right feedback, triaging it and actually acting on opportunities. So um, yeah, 
it's just like I'm actually just thinking like the best example is actually um, probably Vero, Chris Sexton from our, uh, he went through our 2011, 12 cohort, uh, 12 cohorts are like our second cohort. And he actually, um, the little known history there is he started um, his startup in the accounting space. Um, and then he, what I would call hard pivoted into email marketing, right? But that's, that's just like a realization which he had during Startmate, which is like, that's not a space which I want to pursue. It's not going to well. So therefore I'm actually going to work on a way bigger problem and they're doing really well. So it's like, that's just one example of like many in every cohort we've got companies pivoting. Yeah. Okay. Um, a couple more questions on the selection process. Uh, if you apply and don't make the cut once, are you then barred forever or can you apply again? <laughs> Lovely question. No, like honestly, most of our startups actually um, apply two, three, five times. And sometimes our companies literally have to apply four times, five, five times, and then we actually accept them. I mean, I'm just thinking like, I think Liger, Luke was a great example in the Sydney 19 mm -hmm. cohort. I think he literally applied like four times before that. And on the fifth time he actually got in and then he raised a million dollar round of tobacco start made. Um, but, um, it's like, no, you're not banned. Some of the best founders that we have literally keep applying. Um, I mean, Propeller is another great example. They went through Startmate once and then went through Startmate again. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I think that links for like, to what we look for in the best founders as well, is that, that ability to show progress and incremental progress over time. And the more that we see you over time, the more we can see that you actually execute on what you say you're gonna do. Um, so it can sometimes be a benefit to apply multiple times yeah. or come through office hours multiple times. Um, hmm. what's the best way to prepare yourself for start mate if you're in the initial stages of idea development oh super simple talk to customers like that is the most important thing it's literally like we want you to 100% focus on your business and your customers we don't want to distract you um, we yeah we literally tell you not to attend things if it ever distracts you so the best way to prepare for it is just talk to your customers and get them to pay for it, to tell you it's amazing, like whatever that is. Awesome. Um, we've probably got time for a one or two more questions before we wrap up for the day. Um, one of the questions that's just come through is about investment and hearing rumors that a lot of investments are being delayed or pushed back at the moment um, due to the COVID environment. Um, would you say in your sense that VCs in general have been pivoting towards some of these industries that haven't been as badly affected, say digital payments, um, or is there still capital around for any kind of business idea? Um, yeah, well, so that's a big question. Um, it's, um, it's kind of interesting. Like for example, I mean, I don't think any VCs right now would be investing in in a travel startup so that's kind of like the blunt answer there of just like the um there is almost like no incentive there they might as well wait for like three months six months 12 months to see how that actually develops and um, so that's kind of like probably what the question was kind of looking for um overall though like we see this exactly the same way as start mate where they invest into 10 12 year horizons right so like they are super open to all of those different areas the interesting thing about COVID and travel restrictions and social distancing is that some of the macro trends are actually just being accelerated and that's super exciting. Um, but that's not to say that that's the only space they're going to be investing in. So it's still like super general. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Probably got time for one more question. I've seen this question come up a few times. Uh, it's about one of the key value adds of an accelerator being building that sense of community in the cohort. So linking back to what you were talking about before about how we've pivoted to a remote cohort, how do you think about still creating that same value in the community that we would do regularly in an in-person environment? Mm. You know, I love that question. Yeah, so it's about community building in virtual environments. And David Spinks actually the I was learning so much from him off the back of that as well. But it is very much about creating um, those one-on-one -on -one connections, leaning into those smaller sessions around the serendipity. So what we actually do is um, is give you those points as well. So for example, we have the fellowship going for Startmate right now, and um, it's been absolutely incredible of like, once you reduce the barriers for people to engage with each other, people actually start engage, um, creating their own things. So even our fellows now have 
started to create their own mentor, uh, sorry, their own fellow roulettes where they literally get to know each other. And I mean, that's just one example of like, how can you maintain that sense of community? And that's, that's been really, really fun. So there's just like lots and lots of different ways. And, um, and I'm actually, it's actually an incredible opportunity in itself for Startmates to be able to get engagement across different cities and countries and get everybody mingling together, which is a super exciting space to be in. Awesome. Cool. Well, thanks so much. Um, I think we are up against time now. Um, yeah. Amazing questions. Love the engagement. Any other questions you have, shoot them our way. It's michael at startmate.com.au or sasha at startmate.com.au. Um, you can express your interest. Definitely register for office hours. You've got the link at the top. It's also on our website. Um, you can also hit me up on Twitter, LinkedIn, whatever. Um, thanks so much. Great. Thank you.